Today we will try to make three articles because they are relatively short and in the future we'll have a very long one of our fa on our father. So I would like to split the other rather line. I'd like to hurry over it as it is really the, the most important prayer of, of our Christian faith. So today we will try to make three of them. Last time we've seen uh, already article first in, uh, the first article on the prayer in the Old Testament mm -hmm. and also article 2 in, in the fullness of time that's to say in the New Testament Jesus prayer now the third volume is in the age of the church after Jesus ascension and Pentecost which is basically the, um, the age as we will see of the Holy Spirit. And that's why it beca it starts with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let's read 26, 23. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of the promise was poured out on the disciples, gathered together in one place. While awaiting the Spirit, all these with one accord devoted themselves to prayer. The Spirit who teaches the Church and recalls for her everything that Jesus said was also to form her in the life of so we see that the Holy Spirit is, is not only the Spirit of Truth, which leads to the whole truth and reminds everything Jesus said. It's not only like a doctrinal uh, uh, surety, no, certainly how I would say this, um, guarant, guarantee. guarantee. Yeah. It's more than guarantee. It is. It is also a teacher, a, a spiritual teacher of prayer and spiritual guide as well, spiritual director. And so uh, it is with uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, with His coming, that this new age in the church begins. And uh, this is most importantly, is prayer in, in Christ, in His name, as we have seen in, at the end of the last article and basically it is the Holy Spirit who makes it Jesus prayer in my heart Jesus uh, feelings Jesus thoughts Jesus desires um, now this this prayer is divided tradition into five um, five uh, ways or five forms of, of prayer it is first of all blessing and adoration Prayer of petition, prayer of intercession, prayer of thanksgiving, and prayer of praise. So we will look now more closely into each of these. And um, yeah, and we'll see that these basic forms can be expressed in, in so many ways. Because they, as there are no, no two uh, identical people there is no two identical ways to pray the prayer of each one is unique just as uh, a digital digital imprint or the face is unique for each one as a way to love is so unique for each of one so it is with a prayer so first of all what is blessing let's read 26 26 blessing expresses the basic movement of christian prayer it is an encounter between God and man. In blessing, God's gift... Bless, bless you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Would you mind grabbing me, please? Thank you. In blessing, God's gift and man's acceptance of it are united in dialogue with each other. The prayer of blessing is man's response to God's gifts because... Because God blesses, the human heart can, in return, bless the one who is the source of every blessing. Um, see, this same word, bless, has a slightly different sense when it is God blesses us and when we bless God, right? Right. Uh, it makes me think, you know, sometimes it happens. It happens more than once when you bless a little child, especially when he comes uh, for the first uh, confession, <laughs> it happens that the 
the kid would would do the same, <laughs> like imitating the priest. So this is me, and it makes me think of of this um, when we when God blesses us and when we bless God back. But it's not exactly the same because in priests blessing there's the power of forgiveness mm -hmm. and, and and this mirroring from from the child is just it's so touching uh -huh. but it's it's not the same if you yeah. see what i mean so it is with with god's blessing so uh, they, excuse uh -huh. me, how is that, that different from thanksgiving how is our blessing mm -hmm. of god in this way mm -hmm. different than we will i think we get we'll be able to see more when we will re, um, see about the thanksgiving But Thanksgiving is more, uh, yeah, I'll start to respond already now. We will see that the Thanksgiving and the prayer of Jesus, as we saw already last time, it is in the need, and Jesus gives thanks even before mm. his prayer is heard, like mm. with the resurrection of, of Lazarus. And so we, are, uh, we also are supposed to give thanks in all circumstances. And that's why I wanted to find this letter of St. Bernadette where she says, Lord, I thank you that I've never learned to write correctly without faults. Mm -hmm. uh, I thank you that when the sister saw me, because you know that she entered the monastery after uh, all these events, when sister saw me, they said, this is Bernadette? <laughs> because she was very small. Mm -hmm. I thank you that our uh, mill burnt uh, because they, her parents uh, owned a mill and which burnt in a fire. I thank you for all, all these uh, happenings in my life. So, you see, you give thanks to the Lord for something which is, is about to happen and I believe that it will happen because I ask this and in, in advance I thank, thank for it like Jesus. Or I thank you for uh, for something that uh, usually people see as like a curse rather than a blessing. And this helps me to perceive that it's also a way how the Lord contributes to my spiritual growth and to my eternal happiness. So it always in some sense interested if I, if I dare say. Whereas blessing, it is, I would say, a mid-middle... Uh, between thanksgiving and praise. Praise, we will see, it's purely, totally gratuitous. I bless God for what He is. Uh, I praise God for what He is. And so when I bless, it is thanksgiving, is praise, praisily thanksgiving, or thankful thankful praise, if, if I dare say. It's, mm -hmm. See, it's, I would say the praise with a shade of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so it's like the in between the two, okay. Mm -hmm. And now, um, we I think we can read all three of these. So twenty six, twenty seven. Two fundamental forms express this movement. Our prayer ascends in the Holy Spirit through Christ to the Father. We bless Him for having blessed us. It implores the grace of the Holy Spirit that descends through Christ from the Father. He blesses us. And 26, 28. Adoration is the first attitude of man acknowledging that he is a creature before his creator. It exalts the greatness of the Lord who made us and the almighty power of the Savior who sets us free from evil. Adoration is homage of the Spirit to the King of glory, respectful silence, and the presence of the ever greater God. Adoration of the thrice holy God, sorry, adoration of the thrice holy and sovereign God of love blends with humility and gives assurance to our supplications. Mm -hmm. So adoration is only this small, short article in, in the catechism, but it is extremely important, especially in our community, if you noticed. Mm -hmm. And that's why I would like to extend a little bit more. Adoration, it is... This word has two senses. The first sense is liturgical adoration. That's to say, it's the time that we pass before the exposed blessed sacrament. So it's a liturgical sense. But there's also a theological sense, which is one given by the catechism. It is an act of adoration um, by which I recognize 
that I am in the hands of God, that I am totally dependent on God. Usually the dependence on anything or anybody alienates us. It is the only dependence which instead of alienating us makes us free, makes us uh, greater, noble, nobler, uh, makes us ourselves. Whereas other dependences, they alienate, they, they like steal our identity. Whereas this one like uh, enhances it. Uh, so I recognize that I'm in the hands of God not in the sense when I would recognize that I am in the hands of a cop when he caught me uh, like recklessly driving, for example, but it is rather recognizing that I am in the hands of the beloved. Uh, think of the Song of Salmon. Uh, when you, uh, I am in, in, in the hands of my beloved, nobody would snatch me out of, uh, of, of these. And so it is a dependence which gives me happiness gives me joy, gives me peace, gives me serenity, everything my heart actually longs for. And so this time of adoration in a liturgical sense must be like um, filled with acts of adoration in, in this, in this um, theological sense. And uh, the adoration... Uh, refers to God as a transcendent reality. Transcendent, that's to say, totally beyond everything I can perceive, understand, experience, whatever. Whereas the silent prayer, which is formally kind of the same thing, we're just sitting there before the Blessed Sacrament, it is yet another form of, of prayer which is immanent. Adoration is more transcendent, Whereas uh, San Prince is imminent. It is the same God whom I adore um, when I see his majesty in the mountains, in the stars in the night, in the ocean, in whatever, right? Which reminds me of, of his majesty. And so the same God I retrieve in the depths of, of my heart when I also, in admiration, seeing what kind of creature I am. And when I mean this, I think not, first of all, of our body, which is also so incredibly created, uh, but even deeper, our spiritual faculties, our intelligence, our will, our capacity to love, our capacity to, to suffer out of love, to sacrifice ourselves, etc. And, and there we also see the reflect in the depths of, my, of me, of, of this this intimacy, no, no longer majesty, but this intimacy of God. And it's the same God. So it's like two ways to access to the same reality of God. Uh, and of course, in, in the, the time of silent prayer can be also filled with the acts of adoration. That's for sure. Just as adoration time can be also filled with a silent prayer. But this um, inexperience, it's not that different, but Theologically, it's important to make this distinction to, to see what, what specific, specifies each, each form of prayer. Now, the second point is the prayer of petition. And this prayer of petition, usually um, some people feel like, oh, you know, it's not very like disinterest, not very Christian to ask for things. But the, the catechism formulates it in a very beautiful way. Uh, yeah, I think we can read it, 26, 29, because it's, it's very well said. Mm -hmm. The vocabulary of supplication in the New Testament is rich in shades of meaning. Ask, beseech, plead, invoke, entreat, cry out, even struggle in prayer. Its most usual form, because the most spontaneous, is petition. By prayer of petition, we express awareness of our relationship with God. We are creatures who are not our own beginning, not the masters of adversity, not our own last end. So this is the most important sentence I wanted us to focus on. Could you read it again? Sure. Please. We are creatures who are not our own beginning, not the masters of adversity, not our own last end. 
Mm-hmm. We are sinners who as Christians know that we have turned away from our Father. Our petition is already a turning back to Him. So what, it mean, what does it mean? It means that by petitioning, I just recognize. It's like kind of form of adoration where I recognize that I depend on God. So when I ask, I also de- recognize that I depend on God because I, I'm not sufficient to myself. I ask what I need. <laughs> Let it be a bread. Let it be a passing an exam. Let it be... Uh, heal from the flu or or the cold I caught. You see, all these little things show me and, 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 and reminds me that I'm not master of myself and of my life, of what I am. And that's why it is not only good and right to petition, to ask things in prayer, it is even uh, deeply uh, profoundly normal for my situation of a creature. If I would never ask, it would be a very subtle um, form of pride by which I, ne- I don't need God. I, I'm sufficient to myself, which is kind of like this uh, Pharisee, you know, who thanked God for everything he was. <laughs> if he didn't petition anything. Now, do you remember what the a uh, tax collector was petitioning. Mercy Have me. mercy on me, on sinner. It's the very, very first thing to ask. Let's go and read now um, 2646. Forgiveness, the quest for the kingdom, and every true need are objects of the prayer of petition. So you see, the very first thing and that's how tax collector begins, is to ask for forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. That's how we begin the Mass. That's how our every petition should begin. Lord, have mercy. Because that's what we need. It, fundamentally, we need mercy. Because we are in stuck in the hole of sin. We are in the mortal danger. Lord, have mercy. This is the... Uh, the most important thing. And that's where let's read um, 2631. 31? Mm -hmm. The first movement of the prayer of petition is asking forgiveness. Like the tax collector in the parable, God be merciful to me, a sinner. It is a prerequisite for righteous and pure prayer. A trusting humility brings us back into the light of communion between the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and with another, one another so that we receive from him whatever we ask. Asking forgiveness is the prerequisite for both the Eucharistic liturgy and personal prayer. So this is not only the Mass. um, It should begin with the asking of forgiveness, but also our personal prayer. Lord, have mercy. And that's that's why for uh, for the Oriental... Christians, especially these hermits and, and Cenobites in the desert, the main form of prayer, of personal prayer, is the prayer of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of, li- of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And they just repeat it more often than we do in, in praying rosary. They call it the perpetual, perpetual prayer. So actually it's like a respiration, like breathing. Uh, respiration doesn't exist in English, does it? Uh, um, like breathing and, and they just it becomes automatic in a, in a positive sense prayer it, it's like yeah it's like breathing like your heart is beating even in sleeping it, mm-hmm. it's, it's this like total dependence on God's mercy and this precisely this dependence gives this peace and joy and serenity and, and happiness recognizing in truth that I need badly need His mercy and 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 a calling, calling, calling upon it until it is poured out, of course, because as Jesus taught himself, ask and you will be given. Ask for mercy, you will be given mercy. The second object of petition, as we've read, is the kingdom. As Jesus also said, search for kingdom and all the other stuff will be given to you. Let's read 2632. Christian petition is centered on the desire and search for the kingdom to come. 
in keeping with the teaching of Christ. There is a hierarchy in these petitions. We pray first for the kingdom, then for what is necessary to welcome it and cooperate with its coming. This collaboration with the mission of Christ and the Holy Spirit, which is now that of the church, is the object of the prayer of the apostolic community. It is the prayer of Paul, the apostle par excellence, who reveals to us how the divine solicitude for all the churches ought to inspire Christian prayer. By prayer, every baptized person works for the coming of the kingdom. So, see, um, the introduction to the prayer is, <clears throat> Lord, have mercy. Recognition of my poverty, of my sinfulness, and of my need of God. The center of the prayer, as well as liturgical, and as it should be also my prayer, personal prayer, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. What does it mean, thy kingdom come? Thy, it means that what I experience in the depths of my heart, of my being, while receiving the mercy, it's imminent. I, want, I ask that it become transcendent, that it become also in my daily life, in my relationship with other people, in our societies, in our communities, in, 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 yeah, in, in our humanity. That is the kingdom. We will see it more in details when we will be looking into this um, Our Father prayer, Lord's Prayer, on this petition. But this is the point. If we did not know or we did not consciously realize, this must be the center of our prayer. Long, Lord, come. Thy kingdom come. Because when Lord comes, His kingdom comes as well. Uh, that's to say that everything in the kingdom is submitted to the king. Um, that's to say everything is um, governed and directed by the king and not by the usurpator. You have this word? You understand it? Usurper? Mm-hmm. Usurper of... Of, of this kingdom, as you say, the one who pretends to be the prince of this world, but actually he's just a usurper. Um, and, and when we look around us, in, again in our lives, in our own lives, because of the sin and temptation, in our communities, including very Christian and very holy communi- communities like St. John Institute, uh, or, or, or in our societies, there is the other kingdom. And the other prince, which like uh, imparts us, impels us to do things. And, and we suffer about it. And we just beg, Lord, thy kingdom come. Just as we ask the mercy for ourselves. And this mercy basically is to be freed from sin. When we ask for the kingdom, we ask that this, w- this would be expanded beyond my own pers- personality. That it would be expanded to, the, to the, our human communities. And then the third, so it's like universal, like a large um, horizon of prayer of Jesus himself, actually. And then we focus at the, at the end, at the third stage, on my concrete, precise needs, as we do in, in the Vespers, after like large uh, uh, petitions for the whole world, we come to our personal um, demands. Let's read 26.33. When we share in God's saving love, we understand that every need can become the object of petition. Christ, who assumed all things in order to redeem all things, is glorified by what we ask the Father in his name. It is with this confidence that St. James and St. Paul exhort us to pray at all times. So see, uh, every need can become the object of the petition because every need reminds me of my um, situation of a creature of, of the one who is totally dependent on, on God and it reminds me of, of this goodness of dependence on God because it like gives makes me retrieve this relationship with him because without it I just can quickly fall into the illusion delude, delude myself thinking that oh, I'm sufficient to myself I am the master of my life no it's not it's not true. And uh, uh, also some people say, oh, but how can I like bother God with my stupid little uh, details of like banal and ridiculous things? No, 
when you love someone, you're interested in everything he or she is doing or caring about or concerned with. God so much more. There's no ban of uh, ridiculous things for us when we love someone. So much more with God. There's no, uh, like, uh, unworthy things to ask of God. No, everything, every need can become the object of petition. And that's to say, an occasion of dialogue. Uh, because prayer, this is the point of the prayer. It's a dialogue with God. And the petition, and the need, makes me... Uh, um, take this occasion of dialogue and so to enter into the relationship with prayer of, of God. So see, petition, we need to get rid, if the need exists, of this stupid imagination that the petition is something not really noble, <laughs> Christian, disinterest, whatever. No, on the contrary, it is a perfect reminder what I am. It is for my humility. And it is for the deepening of this relationship with God. Now, the intercession. Um, the, the intercessor is Jesus, of course. And as we pray and live and move, as says uh, St. Paul in the letter to the Romans, in Him, so also in Him we can intercede for others, uh, asking on behalf of another. Um, it's kind of like in the family, because the church is a family. But we see it already in the family, especially there were a lot of children. And if some does something which is wrong, the intercession of a brother or a sister of all of them uh, can uh, make things <laughs> softer, I dare say, see? So we have like this a human example how intercession works. We we just it is a part of our human nature and that's why God wanted that. In our prayer and our spiritual life, what is natural in our the grace never destroys the nature, it ennobles and enhances it. So it is with this uh, spiritual intercession and prayer. Let's read twenty six thirty five. Since Abraham intercession asking on behalf of another, has been characteristic of a heart attuned to God's mercy. In the age of the church, Christian intercession participates in Christ as an expression of the communion of saints. In intercession, he who prays looks not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others, even to the point of praying for those who do him harm. So, see, the intercession, it is... Um, it is uh, most of all participating in the communion of saints not only through the communion with Christ because it is in him that I ask on behalf, in his name that I ask on behalf of another person but it is also in the sense that this communion of saints connects me with my neighbor so when I intercede asking something on behalf of my neighbor I actually ask for myself because everything which be belongs to my brother or sister belongs also to me. When I ask graces for him or her, I actually ask them for me because we are the same body. When I ask health for the eyes, it's good for the whole body. And not even for feet. What way it could be? Oh, a huge way. Because if you are blind, your feet will have to walk a lot <laughs> and to suffer a lot because you will stumble. They're very connected. So it is, we might not see the connection, but the connection exists when we ask for graces for our uh, brethren. And so it is, like I said in the communion of sins, all the graces of, of my brother and sister are mine as well. So basically when, when I ask for them, I ask for me too. Um, and then all, all the sins of my brother and sister are also my sins. So when I ask for forgiveness on behalf on my neighbor, I actually ask for forgiveness for me too, because a single personal sin of one member of the church pulls down the whole church with over one billion persons down. And one act of pure love, uh, petition, intercession, praise, thanksgiving, blessing, whatever it might be, 
pulls up towards heaven the whole body of the church. See how connected we are. Um, and that's why when I, when I see somebody doing something wrong, the natural reaction is judgment. It is demonic reaction. Because that's what the devil does. He judges. He judges us harshly. Uh, the reaction of a saint, Christ's reaction, is to intercede. Lord, they do not know what they do on the cross. On the very moment of the, his worst sufferings, spiritual and physical, what he does, he intercedes. Um, forgive them because they do not know what they do. Uh, and that's how, that's how he left us an example so that we might do the same. And asking again, Instead of, like, natural reaction, again, demonic natural reaction, is to be jealous about all the others have what I don't. Starting with the stupid things like things, finishing like relationships, talents, gifts, glory, reputation, whatever. No, give thanks. Because in a sense, it's also mine. Even if I don't see the connection, it is mine as well. Okay. Um, so this is about the intercession. Now, um, prayer of thanksgiving. Let's read twenty six thirty seven. Thanksgiving celebrates. Thanksgiving characterizes the prayer of the church, which, in celebrating the Eucharist, reveals and becomes more fully what she is. Indeed, in the work of salvation, Christ sets creation free from sin and death to consecrate it anew and make it return to the Father for his glory. The thanksgiving of the members of the body should dissipate and not of their head. So the, the most important sentence in here is the Eucharist, because Eucharist in Greek is thanksgiving. Thank you in this Christo. They say it every day. At Christo. Thank you. Uh, so, and, and the Catechism says that in celebrating the Eucharist, the Church reveals what she is. That's to say, the Church is thanksgiving and becomes more fully what she is. That's to say, thanksgiving. We are, as a Church, to be a thanksgiving to the Father for the Son because Jesus has given to us his body and blood and his uh, soul and divinity are given to us in the Eucharist. So we're giving thanks to the Father for the Son. And we give thanks, actually, we learn in the Eucharist to give thanks on every occasion, like we've seen already, suffering or joy, everything. Yeah, so let's look into 2638. As in the prayer of petition, every event and need can become an offering of thanksgiving. The letters of St. Paul often begin and end with thanksgiving, and the Lord Jesus is always present in it. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. So this is extremely important, like I said already in the intercession, that we need to Thank, give thanks for what we might be jealous of others as it was. It is already a, a healing. But it, is also, it, it also gives a very special connotation, a special like mood for all of our lives when we begin our days and finish our days. We begin our works and finish our works with thanksgiving. It, the, a heart full of thanksgiving is a positive heart. It is a serene and peaceful heart. It's a joyful heart because it, it is aware that the world, that the things, that the people, the relationships, that everything which happens to me, it is a gift of God. What the, what the gift means? It means that I am loved. Because usually we give gifts to the loved ones. Well, there's a perversion of it, of course, like you're giving as a corruption thing. Uh, but initially, normally, it is an expression of love. And so if I am able to perceive the reasons for which I am thankful today, 
just today, just now, just this moment, uh, through this I'm able to perceive that I'm loved, which is the most profound and fundamental desire and need of our heart. In a sense, more fundamental than the need of uh, the air and food and, and other basic things for our body. It is the fundamental spiritual need. And that's why Mother Teresa's most focus was to to take care of those which were most unwanted and unloved. Because it is like the most horrible spiritual starving. Um, uh, and when it coincides with a bodily starving, it's really, really the, the most awful suffering that a human person can experience in, in, in its... In, in his um, being. So the Thanksgiving makes me aware that I'm incredibly loved. And again, like I said, everything can be occasion of, of Thanksgiving. Food, sun that we have, the, the place where we are at, you know, everything, everything. The person that I meet, the, uh, this morning I was running, uh, and often I cross this like a gathering of, of school children waiting for the bus. And I've seen that boy uh, plenty of times. But today he, is, uh, tell, uh, he said to me, good morning, <laughs> you know, and smiled. And it is, it's such a, such a beautiful um, image of, of God's love. I, I don't know these, this boy, you know, he's maybe 10, 10, 12, he just lives there and comes to the bus station every, every morning. But this morning there's something happened, and, and when you know that every human person is an image and a resemblance of God, it is God himself who smiled at me and said, good morning. Mm -hmm. See, so if I'm able to perceive this and interpret it uh, in this sense, it just changes my life. Or if I just, you know, like, oh, another guy saying good morning, so I just force myself his good morning and just <laughs> run and forget about it. I mean, it is a gift which was given, but it was not even noticed. It just, like, um, returned to the seller even without getting cash, if, you, if I dare say. See? So that is the point of, of Thanksgiving. Now, the last thing is prayer of praise. 2639. Praise is a form of prayer which recognizes most immediately that God is God. It lauds God for his own sake and gives him glory, quite beyond what he does, but simply because he is. Can you read it again, this sentence? It lauds God. It lauds God for his own sake and gives him glory, quite beyond what he does, but simply because. <laughs> Quite beyond what he does, but simply because what he is. Why is this so important? You, we can understand this only in the light of love. When we love the person, we love that person, if it is a true, genuine love, quite beyond what he or she does, but simply because he or she is. See? Mm -hmm. So it is with God. We need to read these, this verse in this light of of, of love. Mm -hmm. It shares in the blessed happiness of the pure of heart who love God in faith before seeing Him in glory. By praise, the Spirit is joined to our spirits to bear witness that we are children of God, testifying to the only Son in whom we are adopted and by whom we glorify the Father. Praise embraces the other forms of prayer and carries them toward Him who is its source and goal, the one God, the Father, in whom are all things and for whom we exist. So I guess the most important here to understand that the praise, um, like totally disinterest form of prayer, finally is mostly interested one. Because when I praise, I actually love. And as Jesus himself taught us, it is better to love than to be loved to give than to receive. Why? Because God is love. God is the first who loved us. So when we love, we become alive to God. We become a sharers in His divine nature who loves first, for free, without waiting anything in response. And if we are able to love in this way, 
we are sharing in God's happiness. So we are become really the most blessed and happy creatures. Uh, and this way um, uh, of love is accessible only by praise. See how praise, it's not just, you know, you are, no, it is, it, it, it is, uh, I would say, deeply spiritual, chiropractical, chiropractical, what do you pronounce? Chiropractical. Oh, but that would be a medical term. Maybe. Yes, I want to use this. It's so chiropractic. It's like a deeply spiritual chiropractical oh, act, which, 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 like puts back yeah. your whole whole being in in the right position, yeah. and then you, like, Brother Francis Therese the other day when he came back after the six minutes, like, twenty years I didn't feel so good. It just puts back in the right structure my whole being the praise why it is so so important okay so here we stop 10 or 15 minutes do you need for the break Mm -hmm. 10 10? okay so uh, 10 35 we will continue okay okay thank you thank you